All right, welcome to my afternoon home from school. Uh, as you can see, I'm, do I'm doing a little bit of uh, overclocking on my i7 11700K. I know that this chip can hit 5 gigahertz all core locked at about 1.34 volts. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the voltage a little bit and try to hit 5.1 gigahertz. save and exit. See what happens. We are also using a Corsair 360 millimeter H150i. Pretty high-end water cooler. Uh, it is able to keep the chip relatively cool to load up task manager. We are only hitting 4.97, man I hate when it does this. I hate when it does that. Let's open up Cinebench though and see what happens when we throw it under load. We're still only hitting 5 gigahertz. What is going on there? Let's go ahead and restart. Because something is not going right. We are back in the BIOS. Let's go ahead and raise the voltage by just a little bit. Gear mode, gear one. Yeah, so we're running 3200 mega transfers per second DDR4. Ring ratio is at 42. I tried to set it to 4.5 gigahertz earlier or a ring ratio of 45 that crashed it unfortunately so the limit seems to be 4.4 gigahertz on the cache number of CPU cores enabled 8 you know what we're gonna go ahead and do going to disable we're gonna disable hyperthreading first off hyperthreading takes more voltage on the core Number of CPU cores enabled, let's do four. Let's do 5.1 gigahertz all core. My entire system shut down, that is not a good sign. Just so you guys know, I'm not actually in danger of breaking anything. Uh, as long as you're able to keep the chip relatively cool, which I am able to keep it relatively cool via a window that I'm able to open right there. Um, kind of a jank way to keep things cool, but hey, I mean, it, it works. Just so you guys know, I'm not like a professional overclocker. Um, I'm just doing this just to see how far I can push this chip, even though I know that there are AI programs that can do it. We're hitting 5.08 gigahertz. Once again, geez, I hate when it does this, but that's we're at 75, 89% CPU usage because we are sitting with only four cores. Temps actually look pretty good. Sitting in the high of 30s, mid to high 30s. Now one thing I will say that I think is very important to mention, if this chip could hit 5.3 gigahertz all core, it would be an i9-11900K. I don't think the voltage really matters all that much, but the fact that we're kind of tinkering with the core count and the thread count is kind of unfair as we're diverting more power to the actual cores itself. However, at the same time, I just want to see this thing hit 5.3 gigahertz. So let's go ahead and restart. BIOS time. Let's go ahead and keep the voltage the same. Advanced CPU settings. Set it to 53.
That might be a little aggressive, but let's also set the voltage to 1.367. Or 1.37, that works too. Let's see if it crashes. This is taking a really long time. I have a feeling something went wrong. Yep, there we go. So we ran into our first issue. Missing check except machine check exception. Go ahead and go back into the BIOS. Let's turn up the voltage. I bet you it probably changed all the settings, so I'm going to have to go back through and reset them all. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Well then, restarted the system and we're still running into this issue. At this point I just want my system to start up so I can just go back and fix everything. Uh, okay, I'll be right back. Restarting number two. There we go, we are back in the BIOS. So. Whatever failed, the limit is obviously somewhere under 5.3 gigahertz then. Either that or we do what separates the men from the boys. Uh, I have a feeling it crashed. Yup. Machine check exception. Okay. So, whatever it is, let's go ahead and lower it to 5.2 gigahertz. Whole machine shut off again. Lower the voltage a little bit. Advanced CPU settings. So the limit is 5.2 gigahertz. Not 521. That would be an absolute L. But what I will say, ooh, and the temperature actually doesn't look that bad, to be honest. Like, obviously, I wouldn't run this 24 7, but hey, I mean, if it works, it works. Okay, so this did not happen last time, so that is good. Okay, we are on the desktop. And voila. We're sitting at 5.2 gigahertz. Um, cool, I will be right back. I'm going to go turn on a full eight cores and 16 threads because we have some overhead. All right, we are back in the BIOS to give our CPU some more juice. Setting at 5.2 gigahertz all core. Let's see if this works or if we need more voltage. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, clock watchdog timeout. Nor voltage. Once again, we are setting the voltage to 1.4, which is pretty uncomfortably high, if you ask me. But let's see if it works. And we crashed again. Just waiting for the blue screen to show up because my peripherals aren't working. Machine check exception. So, I think we're pushing the VRMs too hard. Wow. Okay, well, I will uh, I will be right back. I'm going to put everything back to where I had it before. Um, and discuss a little bit about what I think I've learned over the course of the day. 
So what can we take away from all this? Well, I think it's important to note the silicon lottery. For those of you who don't know what it is, really all the silicon lottery is the fact that some chips will have more defects than others. They may or may not impact the functionality of the chip, but what they definitely impact are the power characteristics and clock speeds. For example, say that there's an 8-core Rocket Lake die, and one of the cores has something defective in it. That means it'll definitely be cut down into a 6-core part most likely, and will just be sold off as an Intel Core i5-11600. However, if we have two 8-core dies and one of them has better power characteristics and can clock higher, that means they'll put it into the i9-11900K which hits 5.3GHz all core. It's kind of fascinating, but at the end of the day, we're being limited by the physical characteristics of the silicon we got in our 11700K, and if I had the money and time, I would definitely buy more of them to actually test them, but I just don't. If you were to buy several samples of these chips or receive several samples of them, you could map them out and you'd actually get more of a bell curve, where some of them would be above average, some of them would be below average, but most of them would be in the average area, which means it would be hitting spec. I think it's kind of fascinating, but at the end of the day, we're just being limited by the silicon lottery, which we kind of lost with this particular sample. Either way, I'm more than happy running it at 5.0 GHz. It's just important to mention that running a chip at these super high clock speeds, such as like 5.2, 5.3 GHz all core for an elongated period of time, when it's not within manufacturer spec, can be detrimental to the performance of your chip long term. But in reality, in the terms of like, five to ten years it will be perfectly fine that's all i really wanted to say on the matter and if you guys enjoy it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads if you guys want to see me base clock overclock the 11400 i can definitely do that as well but for the time being thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next video